Hello and welcome back to the Alchemical Arts. Today's going to be a short video of just running a little experiment on making another cobalt pigment because we haven't got enough cobalt pigments in our life. And basically what I want to do today is move into the violet area of cobalt potential pigments. So cobalt's one of those fantastic compounds that I've been thoroughly enjoying given the fact that you can produce so many different colors out of it that I thought I'd give the cobalt violet a try so it should be a fairly simple process I've only sort of played around with this slightly at the moment so I'm not super confident on exactly what I'm doing but I've managed to produce a few little like samples of pigments so I thought I would try and make a slightly larger more controlled sample this time so what I have here in the beaker is we have a fairly concentrated solution of cobalt chloride um, there was 30 grams of carbonate went in there so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small amount of my concentrated cobalt chloride solution here I'm going to add it to a erlamina flask that I'm going to put some mono sodium phosphate into and so yeah I've got five grams of mono sodium phosphate which I'm going to add to each of the Erlamina flasks here and just give it a little bit of a stir this is a food grade mono sodium phosphate so we put five grams into that flask there and five grams into this flask because the reason I'm doing two is that cobalt violet generally exists in two states. There's a, cobo there's a cobalt violet light and a cobalt violet dark. So I'm hoping to precipitate both of those. So I'm just going to get a little stir rod and get this stirred. interesting it seems to go quite hard on, on contact with water so, that's a fun little development I could put these on the stir plate and stir them but I can't really be bothered at the moment setting that up so I'll just stir it manually all right so now that the sodium phosphate has dissolved into the solution there what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out with the volumetric flask here 25 mils of the cobalt chloride solution so then we'll add that to our phosphate solutions as well okay so we have two solutions there both with five grams of monosodium phosphate and probably roughly the equivalent of five grams of cobalt chloride in there based on my calculations from the solution that I had prepared and now we're going to basify these with an alkali so I'm going to be using ammonia just regular store-bought ammonia from the supermarket and that should then start to precipitate out our cobalt ammonia phosphate which will be our violet pigment pop that one to the side for the moment and we'll just focus on this guy here so we have a solution of ammonia here and what I think I'll do is I'll dilute this solution down just a little bit more so you can see the precipitation a little bit better but I'll bring it up to about there about 200 mils of water and then we're just going to slowly add the ammonia solution I'm 
immediately you can see a purple precipitate forming. This a little bit of a swirl. So quite a large quantity of a moderately deep purple colour has started to precipitate out. So I'm going to let that just settle for a moment so that I can assess how much the solution is cleared up because that'll let me know how much cobalt chloride is still in solution and whether or not I need to keep adding ammonia essentially. So I can tell that because there's still a reddish tinge to the liquid on top there is still cobalt chloride present so I may as well keep adding some ammonia. It's really interesting the color change between like where the ammonia first hits you get a much deeper purple because of the higher alkalinity but then as it sort of mixes through because of the acidity of the cobalt chloride it sort of settles into a lighter shade and particularly if I start to swirl it like that, it becomes a bit more homogenous. It is a very beautiful shade though, I must admit. I never really use violet or purple pigments on my palette, but I think I might have to. I think we can go a little bit more. Right. Doesn't appear to be much more precipitate forming now, so I think I'll just give this one final swirl and then just let it leave it to the side and let the pigment settle down and I'll also assess what the color of the solution looks like after that. Yeah, I ended up adding about 50 mils of a 20% solution of ammonia. And I think I'm pretty happy with that colour. So we'll pop that, pop that one to the side and bring the next one in. Alright, so second one. This time we're trying to darken the cobalt phosphate and make it a slightly deeper shade of pigment. And to do that, I'm going to co-precipitate it out with... So while I add the ammonia, I'm also going to add a tiny bit of uh, sodium hydroxide or lye solution here. And that should help deepen the color a little bit more. So we'll just put in that. And as we put in that, we'll put in a little bit of that too. Already that's way darker in color, but we don't want to lose what we've got, so let's keep going. Definitely adding more ammonia, give that a swirl. I think we've seemed to have done it this time too. Nice! I think that worked as well. Again, I used about the same amount of ammonia, about, it was about 50 mils, and I used probably about 15 mils of a fairly weak sodium hydroxide solution. And if we just compare the two, we definitely have a deeper shade on this side compared to this one. But as you can see, as this is settling out, there's clearly still cobalt chloride in the solution. So not everything has reacted, so more ammonia could be used. But I think what I'll do is I'll filter both of these and then 
I will see if I can precipitate any more pigment out once I've collected the filtrate. So interestingly, I took the resulting liquid from the first one, the light pigment, and I ended up with a precipitate that was again a shade darker than the dark one that we first did over here. So this one here is the, the, the one that had the mixture of ammonia and sodium hydroxide. This one here is the leftover liquid from the first one and yeah surprisingly it gave me an even darker precipitate when I added some more ammonia because the resulting liquid was still pink which indicated that there was cobalt chloride still present. And so now I'll, I'll filter these two up and then I'll show you I should end up with three shades. I should have ended up with, yeah, with three shades of the cobalt violet, which should be quite nice. So here we are back with the cobalt phosphate or cobalt violet samples that I was preparing earlier. I've given them a bit of a dry after filtering and a rough grind. I think if I was to process these up for actual painting, I'd probably wash them again to remove any insoluble uh, contaminants that might be in there still, and then I would dry them more thoroughly and grind them much, much finer. But for demonstration purposes and the purpose of this video, this will do. So on the right hand side here, we have the lightest of the precipitates, which is just this sort of soft, lilac-y sort of... Yeah, this soft sort of colour is the result of just adding only a small amount of ammonia to the cobalt uh, monosodium phosphate solution that I made. And then the second one here that has the more... So this one, I think it's still... It, it's still a little bit moist and wet, that's why it's so, the color is so bright coming out of it, because that little bit of moisture content helps brighten up the color. But this was the one where I did the co-precipitation of the sodium hydroxide and the ammonia. And obviously we ended up with a darker shade than the first one, which was the intention. And I think this is by far my favorite of the purple that we got out of them. So yeah, I think this one was a particularly successful one. And the third one over here, so this guy here, which was the one that resulted when... So when I was filtering this mixture here... So yeah, the resulting liquid that came off this one, I decided was it was still tinted with cobalt chloride, so it still had like a coloured hue to it. So I decided I'd add more ammonia and quite an excess of ammonia. And through the addition of an excess of ammonia and I think a little bit of sodium hydroxide, I can't remember now, I'd have to look back on it, I ended up with an even darker precipitate, which is the one here. And so what I think I've managed to figure out or conclude from this experiment was that I don't think the sodium hydroxide is entirely necessary and I think the shade really depends on the amount of ammonia that I use and I think this resulting compound that I'm ending up with here is actually cobalt ammonium phosphate. But all in all this was a pretty successful result I think and what I'd like to do is make a few slightly larger batches of this in the future and process it up as an oil to see how its behavior and properties are in oil. Yeah, because I think in oil is where most colors tend to really shine and come to life. That's the beauty of oil paints. I have one other little thing I'll show you. So th this is the combined filtrate from when I filtered off the pigment from all the other samples there, obviously there was still 
contamination, oh, there was still residual cobalt and ammonia and phosphate in each of the solutions. So when all the filtrate combined together, we got another pink precipitate come out, which is really quite a lovely, vivid pink shade. I'll just give that a bit of a stir up so you can see it. So I think I'll filter this off and I'll end up with a, th with a fourth shade of the pigment, which is rather interesting nonetheless. It's these happy little accidents, as Bob Ross used to say. They're always quite nice. Anyway, thank you for joining in for another cobalt pigment. Um, it's been a lot of fun, and purple's definitely a color I thoroughly enjoy, but don't necessarily always think about as much as some of the other more dominant colors, or at least dominant in my mind. But yeah, anyway, thank you for tuning in, and stay tuned. I've got one more cobalt, oh, actually I've got a couple more cobalt pigments still to come. It's a very versatile metal. It seems to yield quite a lot of things. And yeah, until next time, take care.